there, there's a question you hate, mm -hmm. and it's, do you believe in God? And I, and I love your approach on that. Well, people don't know what they mean when they ask that question. So I would love you to elaborate it's on nonsensical. that. It's nonsensical. Well, because people, what people usually want, Christians do this to me mostly, what they really want is they want me to validate their theory of belief. And they don't even know they have a theory of belief because they think what belief is is obvious, and it's not obvious at all. Like, is belief your willingness to verbally assent to the reality of a set of facts? Well, that's what an empiricist would say, or a rationalist. And most Christians who ask me that question are rationalist empiricists, and they don't even know it. And so they want me to say, well, God exists the same way a table exists. And that's, that's, just, that's just not helpful. They, that isn't a helpful question. It's not formulated properly. And then there's many other forms of belief. So you can say one thing and do another, right? Then you might say, well, then what do you believe? Do you believe what you say or do you believe what you did? And I mean, people are full of contradictions like that. Well, and so I would say, I love that. I generally speaking, what you do is a much more precise and accurate marker of what you believe than what you say. Now, if you were fully integrated, what you say and what you believed would be the same thing. But that's pretty damn rare. And people will say, well, I believe in Christ. And I think, you do, do you? Really? Look at Where, your actions. What's the evidence for that? You know Are you them moving by their mountains fruits. with your faith? And if you're not, then you might ask, well, you know, just how deep is your belief? Because in principle, if you have sufficient faith, then you can move mountains. And so, you know, and does that, is that literally the case? That's a stupid question. So he spoke in parables. So if you knew him, you knew what he was saying. I, well, we move mountains all the time. We use like earth moving equipment to move mountains. We can move mountains, but that, and so, and to some degree, that's a manifestation of faith if you, if you untangle it sufficiently. But you, you, when you read the biblical texts, for example, there's part of what you need to bring to bear on the stories is a bit of imagination. They're not, they're not, it's not a, it's not a, collection of scientific texts. That's not what it is. It's, it's not even close to that. That's not what it is. So, and most people who say to me, you know, do you believe in God? This question's just a trap. And the trap is, are you willing to tell me that what I believe to be the case about what I believe is true? It's like, no, because we're not coming at the question from the same perspective. So, and then people are irritated at me because they say, well, you can't, question what the person means to believe and it's well that's what they're doing to me so I, I see absolutely no reason why turnabout isn't fair play do you believe in God do you believe in your belief what exactly do you mean and you're going to ask a question that there isn't a deeper question than that that is the most intrusive possible question and it, what are you just supposed to that's just something casual it's not casual not in the least what do they say? By their fruits, you'll know them. Mm. Right. Well, there you go. That's the right answer to that question. That, that, I, was, I was sitting and I'm, I'm praying. I'm like, God, like, I don't want, I, I know that question is pointless, right? Because obviously by your works, I know that you know that there is a creator out there and you're doing in every decision you can to, to not only please him. Well, I don't him, know if he's out there. I'm not sure exactly where he is. Well, he... <laughs> Okay, fair, fair. But so I, I was praying on, and I, and, oh, and the, they're under the bed. There's, there's the question, and I, it came to me, and th this is it. This is the question that I would replace that question with. Mm -hmm. and it's, do you love Christ with all of your heart? Probably not. That's a hard stunt to pull off, and it's a hell of a demand. Do you love your daughter with all of your heart? Same question, probably. Same objection, probably applies. Like. You know, none of us are unblemished vessels. So, no. Does that mean I'm not trying to? Well, I'm probably to some degree it means that. That's partly what did, in the Gospels, Christ says, not, people were calling him good. And he said that, he said, Why do you response, say I'm good? There was, there, that's right. There's none but God who is good. Well, you know. But he's patronizing them. Yeah. Because they were patronizing him. 
it, it's not only, he may have been patronizing them, but to a point, to, with a point in mind, and not only that. My mom used to always say, you're, the only person you should look up to is Christ and the way he moves. And he was never disrespectful. The worst thing he ever did to somebody is let them go to their own decisions. And I found that to be very powerful because you could really take down anything in your life without being evil. To be strong is to put the armor of God on, from my perspective, right? Another man might not see that. But the arm of Christ, is, it's, uh, it's actually pretty, pretty magnificent when you put it to the test. What do you mean? I believe that when we encounter evil, it's never the human, it's the spirit. And I believe that when we deal with people, we want to use emotions instead of like logic. And for me, the Bible verse says, be angry, but sin not. He obviously knows you're going to be angry, but how are you going to deal with it? And then how you deal with it will outcome where you go from that point. I believe my God to be a good father. So if I'm asking him for me to be a mighty man and a man that could help my family, that could provide, that could put on these cameras and open up people's hearts, you don't think he's going to put me to a test that could make me explain to people how to get out of their situations. You're going to have to be put in a very hard circumstance for you to get out of it. But that's what you prayed for. So for example, when I moved on to do this show, the one challenging dilemma that I had was forgiveness. And as a Christian, that should be the easiest thing in the world. But well, it's forgiveness very, is difficult. It's very difficult. And how I stumbled upon it is... Well, it's difficult partly because it's not easy to understand the preconditions under which it's appropriate. Could you elaborate? Well, you can't give forgiveness away casually. It has, to be, it has to be asked. You can't just give it to somebody who hasn't asked. Is that what you mean by that? Like somebody's wronged you, but you can't forgive them until they asked. Is that what you meant by that? Usually, in, say in the context of a relationship, look, if someone, if someone hurt you in the past and they're out of your life, there are practices that you might undertake to free you of the burden you might still be carrying because of their betrayal. Mm. But in the context of an ongoing relationship, it's very difficult and likely inappropriate to forgive without understanding. I mean, the, the process of forgiveness, say, among Catholics, Christians in general, but we'll stick with the Catholics for now, is, well, you have to confess then you have to repent, then you have to atone. Like there's a process. Yeah. And so, you know, if I'm having a fight with my wife, let's say, or vice versa, and we've, we're coming across an issue that's really quite sticky, and maybe there's some betrayal, real or imagined, evolved, involved, we have to get to the bottom of things. We have to sort out what happened. We have to set it straight, and then we both have to swear not to have that happen again. And then... You can forgive and move on. But it's not it's not like whitewash. It's not like you can paint over a situation. You have to you have to deal with it.